Hello, my wonderful friends. I'm Coral. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be going over some of the books that I will be reading for February. Um, February is Black History Month, and February is also Women in Horror Month. So that's what I'm basing my stuff on, reading women horror authors, mostly. There are a couple books in here that are not going to be quite like that, but you know, um, I've got shit to do. So first I'm going to be talking, there's actually quite a few books here that are pre-orders that have not made their way to me yet. So I'm going to be telling you about those first, just so, because sometimes it's like, okay, listen, I have this thing wrong with my brain where if something is not right in front of me, it's like it doesn't exist. And so I forget about it. So I have to do that first. Otherwise I will forget about it. So first off, this is actually an anthology that I've started already. This is Dark Stars, New Tales of Darkest Horror. This is edited by John F. D. Taff. I don't know. I mean, there isn't really a theme surrounding this anthology, it doesn't seem like, but it is authors including Josh Mallerman, Stephen Graham Jones, Carolyn Kepnes, uh, Priya Sharma, John Langan, Alma Katsu, Usman T. Malik, uh, just, um, I don't know. I think there's 12 stories in here. Did I name all the authors? Oh, Cheshire Burke, Livia Lillowin. Ooh, beautiful last name. Gemma Files and Ramsey Campbell. I've read the first story. It, um, was a story by Carolyn Kepnes, which was very sinister. Um, so I'm excited to get done with that. That's an arc. So I have it as like an ebook right now. Also from last month, it just, I was actually expecting it to come in a certain book box that I get. So I didn't pre-order it. And then it turns out that it wasn't in the book box. Uh, I have spoiled myself. I haven't gotten that book box yet, but I know for sure it's not in there because I looked up spoilers and I was like, fuck, I need to pre-order this. So it's still on its way here. And that is Such a Pretty Smile by Christy Demeester. This I believe takes place in two timelines. It's like a mother and daughter. And one of the timelines is like, following the teenage daughter in like the present time, kind of like almost present time. And then the other one is when the mother was young. And it seems like they might be having some of the same like things happening to them in their lives, but at different times. And there's also this uh, killer called the Kerr who's been murdering young women. Let's see this. I'm just gonna get it right from the synopsis here. It says, girls who are known as troublemakers, those who refuse to conform to know their place, girls who don't know when to shut up. So, hmm, an interesting, maybe feminist horror I'm anticipating it will be. Uh, I'm very excited for this. I love Christy Demeester's writing. All right, and then next, you know, some more women in horror. This is Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes. This is also a pre-order. This comes out February 8th. Um, if you want to pre-order this from bookshop.org. I've got it on my like affiliate page in the description there. I've got a whole list of like the pre-orders that I've talked about. It'll be on there. You can pre-order it. It will be great. So um, this is about a young woman who is on like a repair crew in space and they pick up a distress signal around earth. So they go and it's this luxury space liner which is very um, Titanic-esque, which is interesting because I have another book on my TBR that is Titanic-y. And uh, let's see, I don't know. I think just like something's wrong with the ship. Like the ship had gone missing and nobody knew where it went. And now it's just popped up here years later with this distress signal. So sh I'm sure this young woman is gonna check it out. And uh, I'm assuming things just like don't go well. Um, so the next two here that I don't have physical copies of in my hands here are House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Moss, which is just one of the worst titles. I'm sorry, it is one of the worst titles ever, like Sky and Breath. It just, okay, I'm imagining here in my head an angel, right? Because there's an angel in the story and he is just... He's like, wow, it looks beautiful out today. The sun is shining, the breeze is cool. And he flies up into the air, but all he smells is like people's breath and he's just flying through breath. And that is so gross. What the fuck? Who named this shit? Uh, anyway, so this is like the sequel to House of Earth and Blood, which 
I don't know why. It's like not written very well. The characters are recycled from previous characters that Sarah J Maas has written. She just really, really loves a character type, right? And these characters all fit into, you know, like men with wings who are very hot and hundreds of years old and they like 25 year old female mortal women. And it's just like, it doesn't make sense. It's weird and gross and I like it. So this is the second book in that series. Um, not much to tell you in House of Earth and Blood, there's this woman named Bryce and uh, something terrible happens in the beginning and then later, you know, she's kind of forced to figure out why that happened and she has to team up with this guy who she doesn't like, but of course we know that they're gonna bang because that's how all of her books are. And, you know, it's just like that. So this is, you know, this builds off of that, I'm assuming. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm very excited to read this book. All right, and lastly, this is not a book for Women in Horror Month, but this is a buddy read that I'm doing. This is uh, The Andromeda Strain by Michael Crichton. I read Jurassic Park last year and I really, really loved it. So I'm excited to pick up another one of his books. This is, I don't know, sci-fi? Um, let's see, I'm gonna tell you the synopsis. I'm gonna read you the synopsis. It says, the United States government is given a warning by preeminent biophysicists in the country. Current sterilization procedures applied to returning space probes may be inadequate to guarantee uncontaminated re-entry into the atmosphere. So we're like getting space germs. Then it says, Two years later, 17 satellites are sent out into the outer fringes of space to collect organisms and dust for study. One of them falls to Earth, landing in a desolate era area of Arizona. 12 miles from the landing site in the town of Piedmont, a shocking discovery is made. The streets are littered with the dead bodies of the town's inhabitants as if they dropped dead in their tracks. I love diseases in books, in literature, and also in nonfiction. I enjoy uh, reading about those. So I am very excited about this. I love a space germ. I don't know if I've read, read much about a space germ, but I love movies about a space germ or just any sort of like weird disease. And so I'm very excited about this. Uh, I'm probably gonna listen to this on audio. I believe it's on Scribd. And um, <laughs> you know, if you're ever thinking about trying out Scribd, you can use my uh, referral code and you can get 60 days for free. Um, Scribd is a nice service. And uh, what else here? Okay, so this is it for the books I don't have in front of me. So now I can get to the books that I have in front of me. Continuing on with Women in Horror Month, I'm going to be reading Betty Rose, The Cannibal King by Haley Piper. I read The Worm and His Kings by Haley Piper and I think it was just not a book for me. I don't like cosmic horror and that's okay. But I'd really like to try out more of Haley Piper's stuff where I'm not setting myself up for like not liking something, you know what I mean? So this is about this urban legend about Benny Rose the Cannibal King and he lived in this neighborhood, right? And now these high school girls pull a prank in that neighborhood, I believe, and something happens and they just like can't escape from the neighborhood. So that's really all I know about it. I don't know much, but it seems short and sweet. I love a novella, you guys. I love a horror novella. This is part of the Rewind or Die series by Unnerving. The covers are great. On my list is The Between by Tanana Reeve Du. I've never read anything by her before, but I really enjoy seeing her speak about things. I've seen like a couple horror documentaries now where she, you know, is interviewed and she's just very insightful. She's a very, very smart woman. So this is about a man named Hilton. And when Hilton was young, he was saved from drowning by his grandmother. But in the process of that, she ended up drowning and dying herself. So he's kind of like been haunted with that for his whole life. Oh my God, I can't imagine. And now as an adult, he is having these like really terrible reoccurring dreams. So these things are happening in his dreams, but also he's having a hard time because due to his, uh, due to the profession that his wife has, there is somebody who's kind of out to get their family and has been stalking them. And so he's got this like real life pressure. And then also this pressure when he goes to sleep, like he can't even 
seek solace in like going to sleep because in his dreams he's having these terrible nightmares and he's having um he starts having a hard time knowing what is real and what is not and i've heard that this is just so good i've heard great things about tanana reeves writing and i'm just gonna fucking pop right into this Next on my list is my last cold weather read. Well, maybe not my last, but it's like my last intentional one um, for the winter season. And this is Near the Bone by Christina Henry. This is about a woman named Maddie and she lives on a mountain with her husband. It's been confirmed. I've talked about this before and I wasn't ever sure if uh, the man, I think his name is William. William was her husband. It doesn't say um, explicitly in the synopsis, but she lives with him on the mountain. He seems like he's just like no fucking fun. He seems like the crusty piece of bread that you pull out of like your brown sugar to make sure it, you know, retains, it stays moist. And you know, that crusty bread heel, that's what he is. You just throw it in the trash because like what else will you fucking do with this thing? That's what he is, right? And she has to live with him and it seems really terrible. And they live in the mountain in seclusion, but there are some strange things happening in the wilderness outside their cabin and these animals are like turning up mutilated and things things that are just really abnormal and then also this group of peoples come to like investigate what's happening in the woods or or something like that they're tied to what, what whatever is happening in the woods and william's upset about it that's really all i know i'm excited about this one too i mean i'm excited about all these fucking things i could say that with every single goddamn book because I truly am excited. Then I'm picking up A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. This was an Owl Crate book a few months ago and this has an academic setting so it's kind of dark academia which you know we love. This is about a girl named Felicity who goes to this exclusive boarding school and the dorm that she lives in is purportedly haunted and there's this thing that happened in the school's history where five of the young women going to the school and who lived in this specific dorm died. And so like there's this thing about it and there might be an occult history and Felicity kind of dabbled in that but then something happened. Her girlfriend died and she doesn't want to do that anymore. However, she's kind of drawn to the dark side again when uh, a new student comes. What's her name? Ellis. Great name. So Ellis is uh, very magnetic. People love her. She's a budding novelist. So she's very special apparently. And um, I don't know, I'm guessing they'll, you know, try to get to the bottom of maybe the school's history or this mystery behind what happened to these young women who died. And um, I just want to show you, this has such a fun, um, what do they call this? I don't know, it's stamped maybe they call it. Um, it's got silvery sprayed pages. It's got this great planchette. I don't know what Exientia Ultia means. I don't know, but also it's got this fantastic artwork on the dust jacket. Love this. And I'm assuming this is Ellis, the novelist. I could be wrong and that this might be Felicity. I don't know, I'll figure it out. So then before we get to the TBR jar, this is The Deep by Alma Katsu. This is my last pick, at least intentionally. Maybe I'll get lucky and pick a woman horror author from my jar, but this is The Deep by Alma Katsu. And this is another one of her like historical horror fiction books. And this is about these people on the Titanic, right? We all know the story of the Titanic on its maiden vo voyage, it was supposed to be the ship that was unsinkable. And then, uh, you know, something happened and it sunk. It hit an iceberg. It, it just wasn't great. And <laughs> luckily there were some survivors. And in this book, the people on this boat, they think that something spooky happening before the crash. And then afterwards, some of them survived. And now they want to go back and find out exactly what happened and what caused this boat sinking and it seems like it's gonna be so much fun. It seems so much deeper than um, I expected. I, I didn't really know until right now, um, going over the synopsis again so I can tell you all about it, that it's like not just the Titanic crash, it's also afterwards. And so I'm very excited about that aspect of it. And I 
just want to know are there monsters in here i want to know i want to know okay so lastly is my tbr jar star pick last month i read where dreams descend by janella angelis and it was okay but it wasn't my favorite book ever so uh i'm glad that i did it i read it um so one for one on my star jars okay this is green green is horror normally <laughs> also sometimes white's horror because i run out of my green paper faster than any others let's see okay savage mountain i don't know if you guys can see that and if you can read my little chicken scratch um savage mountain that's by john quick all right savage mountain john quick this came in a nightworms package i think this is like vacation horror which i like um this is by grindhouse press so i'm assuming it might have some extreme elements to it this says ami and her friends i don't know if it's ami or amy ami and her friends just want to do a little white water rafting in the Smoky Mountains. When her jealous boyfriend decides to try to make their amateur guide look foolish, they end up stranded along the banks of the Pigeon River. While searching for help, they run across a group of men growing for the cartels, men who have no intention of letting them escape with their lives. I wonder if this uh, Smoky Mountains, I don't know where, I don't know, I'm not a geography buff, but I know that stuff like that happens up in Northern California in Humboldt, so. Um, I don't think the Smoky Mountains are in Humboldt County though. Could be wrong. So anyways, vacation horror, um, something about drugs, um, and murder. So can't go wrong. Pretty good pick. Um, hopefully I will get to that. I've got, <laughs> one of my goals this year was to make sure I'm not, uh, overwhelming myself because I just get so excited about so many things to read. And then I read like it is what I make my living doing. <laughs> and it's not, unfortunately. Uh, so if you care to send me money for reading books, that would be great. However, no one has offered to do that yet. And so like I read so much and sometimes I get uh, overwhelmed with how much I'm putting on myself. So I don't know. I read 14 books last month. Hopefully these, I think 11, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven books. Hopefully it won't be too much for me. We'll see. <laughs> Check back with me at the end of the month. Anyway, uh, I'd like to tell you all thank you so much for watching. Uh, take a look at my affiliate links down in my description. What else? Um, let me know what you're reading this month. If there's anything really exciting you're looking forward to or if uh you've read any of these and you have any opinions to share i'd love to hear thank you again so much for watching i will see you guys later goodbye